Hey everyone, Keith McGinnis here with KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. We're applying the ultimate top coat. So we've got some tools we need to use, which is our sanding tools to prep the surface. We've got our mixing tools, we've got our roller frames, and then we're going to have the ultimate top coat natural is what we're applying today. So let's just get started. Okay, we're ready to apply the ultimate top coat. And on this piece, which is a fireplace hearth, this is going to get the ultimate top coat natural, which is the matte finish. On my edges, I like to use a red scotch brite pad because I don't want to take a chance of burning through my edge when I'm using 220. Uh, and especially with the rock edge, that scotch brite, red scotch brite pad does a really good job of being able to get in and out of all of those little crooks and crannies. And again, I don't have to worry about um, sanding through. I've got my 220 sanding disc, but I also have, and I'm going to show a description of this, this is, I call this my magic eraser, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you, but when I've got a flood coat that's only 24 hours fresh, as soon as I start sanding the surface, and again, all I'm wanting to do is we just want to create a mechanical bond for the ultimate top coat, but even on that small of an area, I start to get some buildup, and so this rubber eraser I can do this on the camera. Works great for getting all that off of there. Now I've got a clean disc and I can continue on. So make sure that when you're sanding the ultimate top coat, if you allow that buildup to get on your sanding disc, you could put deeper scratches in the surface that the ultimate top coat is not going to fill. So always keep an eye on that sanding disc and make sure that you keep that clean. All right, I've sanded the entire surface, and by using that, my disc is completely clean and ready to use again. Now I'm going to use my red scotch brite pad, and I'm going to go around all of the edges, then we'll be prepped and ready for the ultimate top coat. And make sure you sand that bottom edge, because when you apply ultimate top coat, glass or natural, you want to make sure that you're rolling on that bottom edge to help seal that around that bottom edge, instead of just going across, especially on a straight edge. So I'm, going to speed, so I'm going to speed this part up. Just remember that the Ultima Top Coat needs a mechanical bond. In other words, there needs to be scuffs, sand scratches, if you will, for that Ultima Top Coat uh, to bite and to get good adhesion. So just make sure you keep that in mind. I have the edges sanded. Now what I need to do is I need to wipe this surface off and I need to get all the debris off of this before I'm ready to apply the Ultima Top Coat. So what I'm going to start off doing now I'm going to wipe the surface down with 91% isopropyl alcohol, and I'm not going to oversaturate it. I just want to wipe off any of that dust that has accumulated, and I know I take some steps that other people don't, but after I wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol and run my hand over it, I can still fill little bits of debris. So that homemade lint roller is what I use to pick up any debris, because if I don't pick it up, it's going to end up on the surface and showing through my ultimate top coat. I guess from experience and using this product as much as I have, I know that when I get done and the ultimate top coat has dried, I've done absolutely everything I can to make sure there's no dust, no debris, no lint, nothing on that surface. It's perfectly smooth, ready to cure and deliver. I got my rollers de-shedded. Now, I have two dry rollers and one wet roller. This is only 14 square feet. My other piece is seven square feet, so I have a total of 21 square feet that I'm working with. So I'm going to take that 21 and I'm going to take that times 0.275. That's going to leave me just shy of six ounces of ultimate top coat natural. So <clears throat> with natural and gloss, you're going to multiply your square feet times 0.275 to determine how much product that you're going to need. Now with the natural, we're going to add water, distilled water. And the amount of water that you're going to add for the ultimate top coat natural, which is the mat, is you're gonna take that six ounces times 0.16. So that six ounces times 0.16 leaves me just shy of one ounce of water. It's like 0 0.94, 0 0.98. So I'm gonna use one ounce of water with six ounces of Ultima Top Coat Natural. The one thing that I have to stress is be prepared. Have everything ready to go. Your surface has been prepped. For me, I've gone over it with my homemade lint roller. I have my rollers de-shedded. I have my pressing seal in my pan. I've got my mixing cup ready and I do filter the ultimate top coat natural uh, and I will continue to filter that until it no longer picks up debris 
um, when I'm pouring it in. I've got my ultimate top coat ready and I have my water, which is one ounce. Again, I use distilled water. All right, so I'm gonna be using six ounces. This is two to one. So I'm gonna mix four ounces of part A, two ounces of part B. So I have gotten debris that has come out of the bottle and that's the main reason that I strain it so it doesn't end up on the surface. And we are on the clock. All right, I'm going to thoroughly mix part A and part B before I add in my water. Part A and part B does incorporate fairly well. So it's not that I need to mix for a full two minutes, but you can feel it thicken up as you start to mix the two parts together. As you're mixing, be sure and wipe off your stir stick for any unmixed product that ended up on the stir stick. We'll get the water added in, we're ready to go. So I'm speeding this up because, well, you don't want to watch me mix. But I get everything mixed thoroughly and then I'm ready to pour it in the paint tray and get started. Now I want to completely saturate my roller. I don't know if you're able to see that. Okay. Now, while I've got the product really wet and saturated, I'm going to catch the edges of my rock edge. And I'm going to do that now for a couple of reasons. One is I have plenty of product on my roller. And the other is I know I'm going to be able to smooth out my roller. Once I start going back over the top again. So I'm letting this play in real time because I want you to see that I'm not rushing through this project. Granted, this is only 14 square feet, but I wanted to play this in real time so you could see exactly how I'm applying it with the wet roller, how I'm addressing my edges, and then how I'm going to back roll one last time with my wet roller and then go over it with my dry roller. So let's, let's get back into, uh, yeah, maybe I have something important to say. We'll see. What's really important is you need to make sure that you are getting 100% coverage and not missing any areas. So I do press down when I am applying Okay, now I'm going to go back over one more time lightly and that's to remove any heavy lap lines And now I'm ready to dry roll. No pressure, very lightly. And I'm going to dry roll only one time. I'm not going to go over it a second time. If I dry roll this a second time, I'm going to end up with what's called lift. Lift is basically like it sounds. You're lifting the product. Now I can address my rock edges. And my rock edges, I know that I can do, I want to do those later because I know I can press my roller into those rock edges to get in those pockets out. What you're seeing now is a time lapse of about 17 minutes barreled down into about 30 seconds. But you can see that product dry out and it's going to dry absolutely 100% clear. No lap lines, no roller marks, really turned out nice. So let's just do a flyover and again, this was right after the UTC. It's not 100% dry, but it's after it flashed or dried, if you will. 
really, really turned out nice. Those lateral lines that you see there were put in with the torch. I do that for uh, kind of as a as an effect. So that that's not ultimate top coat, and those are not roller marks or lap lines. But it really, really turned out nice, and I really like the ultimate top coat natural. In my opinion, it really makes the uh, colors pop. Really turned out nice. So I want to thank you all for watching. I know this was a 12-minute video, but I wanted to go through the full tutorial, full duty details of how I applied the Ultimate Top Coat, and I do achieve excellent results. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, please leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe for upcoming tutorials, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks, everybody.